Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to this video. This is John from Programming Knowledge and welcome to part 6 of our PWA tutorial for beginners. So from the previous tutorials, we have implemented and added different elements for our PWA project. So we have here a nice looking app where we could click on this hamburger icon and we could see the sidebar menu where we could navigate to the home section and about section of our app. We also have the add contact or new contact form where we could specify the name and the contact numbers of the new contact. Now, in this video guys, we're gonna try to audit our application and let's try to check and con configure all the necessary items that we need in order for us to su fully support the PWA implementation. So, so for example, the offline um, support where even if the browser or the phone is offline, we should be able to see um, a nice interface telling us that we have limited access because of internet issues. Now, in order for us to audit our app, we're going to have to make use of the Lighthouse tab right here. So go ahead and open that one up. And then you can see here the categories for uh, generating report. We have the performance. If you want to check the performance of your app, um, best practices, accessibility. We, ha we have also the search, um, search engine optimization right here. But our concern right now will be the progressive web app or how or the status, we're, we're, we're going to check the status of our PWA project. And then uh, you just have to click on that and then click on this generate report. And we will wait for a few seconds and letting the browser to generate the report for us. Now basically what you could see here is the different items that you, you want to implement to your project so for example um, we have here the, the report for our PWA um, project so there are items here highlighted with red colors and also the green ones it means that we on already implemented that or configured that particular item so there are few items right here that we need to address so for example uh, the second one is the current page does not, does not respond with a 200 when offline. So basically, our app should be able to respond with 200 status when even if the browser or device is offline. So we need to f configure that or add that uh, feature. And then we need to address this start URL also. And we also have the... PWA optimize section where we could see the items that we need to address. So for example, the redirect to HTTPS, we're going to address that later. And we need to set also the theme color for the address bar. And most of the items right here corresponds to the support for iOS devices. So if you want to support iOS devices, then you have to make sure that you address this particular items right here. So the theme color, um, the content, um, we need to provide also the valid Apple Touch icon. And um, Manifest doesn't have a maskable icon. So we need to address that um, those items right here. Now, what we could do first is try to add the iOS support for our app. So basically what we could do is um, change or modify our index.html and then we're gonna add few items, um, new link here inside our index.html. So just uh, right below the manifest.json link, we could add a comment right here for the iOS support. Okay and then iOS support and in between these comments then we're gonna add the different elements or different um, lines that could you know uh, trigger the support for our iOS devices so the first one will be a link 
and then the link will have a rel attribute which has the value of apple touch and then icon and then the href will be we're gonna use the 96 or the size 96 of our icon so icon um, hyphen 96.png so this is the icon that we're using right here and um, we're gonna add another meta tag right here the name will be Apple mobile uh, hyphen web the uh, hyphen app hyphen status hyphen bar so again this particular lines um, will try to support or add support for iOS devices so in here I'm, I'm just gonna use a color 690695C okay and I'm going to add another meta tag right here which have the name of theme color so as you can probably remember we need to set that right here theme color for the address bar so content and then we could you know use this particular color right here 00695c and close that meta tag right here so um save this and let's try to audit first our app so open with live server okay there you go and click on right click on the project and then inspect and then go to the lighthouse section or tab and then click on the generate report and again we're just going to wait for a few seconds to allow the browser to generate the report for us and then we could see the updated items so as you can see here we have the um, theme color address um, theme color for the address bar uh, we already implemented that um, the the second to the last item which is the apple touch icon so basically now um, this particular item like provides a valid you know apple touch icon for our app when it is open with um, ios devices okay so the other items like for example the first one for the pwa optimized section we're gonna address that later on because um, we could you know add a th tunnel or meaning we could upload our app to a secure domain that uses https right here okay so for now let's try to look at the fetch event for our um, service worker so basically we could add a event listener so so far we have the install we have the activate now the third one will be for fetch event so we're gonna try to look at this particular event so what we could do here is try to um, add the event listener and this time it will be fetch okay and then we're gonna specify the parameter for the callback function so whenever the um, service worker sends or detected the fetch event then it should you know run this particular function right here so what we could do for now is just to display what is inside the event um, parameter that we specify here so console.log and then the parameter event or evt for this particular matter so event and then close that with the semicolon and then save or um, file service worker.js and let's just open the console okay and then refresh we should be able to get the output 
so add event listener and then let's try to check for the fetch event right here okay so let's go to the application tab and then service worker and we should click on this skip waiting option uh, it is to you know activate the new version of our service worker without closing the browser or something so console let's just refresh our page and there we can see all the fetch event that has been detected so each of these objects right here contains the information what are the resources that has been um, fetch or requested us or requested by our application so we have here the first one is um, materialize CSS we also have the material icons we also have the JS file for our materialize and also the app.js so all these files are requested or being requested by our app so that's why it is being detected as fetch or being detected in inside our fetch event so like here we have the png file for our um, icons right here and also we have this material icons uh, fonts right here we also have the service worker the js file we also have manifest.json so again all these files are being requested by by our app so in the next video guys we're gonna try to add or um, configure adding the all these assets into the cache so that every time our app requests these files we should be able to get that coming from our cache and um, we could support an offline you know version of our app so i think that's all there is to it in this video guys and in the next video again we're gonna uh add a add the assets or requested assets into our cache okay so thank you again guys for watching and see you in the next video